All right, Bulls, what's going on? I know that I'm coming at you very, very closely. Sorry about that. Uh, this MacBook is about to go into the trash. Finally crap, crapped out on me. Got to get a new one. So we're going to have to do this the old school way before uh, the stream yard and before all of that. But I'm still staying bullish. I'm rolling with the punches. The show most, must go on. And this is exactly what um, what I'm bringing to you guys here. So remember, everbullish.com. The Sherpa is the Substack. I genuinely believe my Substack is the best thing uh, on the entire internet. I'm giving you the content that most people pay about $100 a month for, for 20 bucks a month. And I'm also giving you the trading tips, the trading advice, and even the lessons uh, and how to do it. Uh, and most of those are a thousand bucks a year or 2000 bucks a year. So anybody that's watching this, I'd love for you to subscribe to my Substack. I'd love for you to buy one of my professional portfolios. But here we are, speaking of the Substack Bulls, how we doing, Bulls? I have to roll old school on this, so I'm sorry about the angles, but remember, the show must go on. So, the market sucked this week, but we sold out. We sold out on Wednesday, we threw limits underneath it. Every single limit that we put in got triggered. Tech stocks sold off. We're gonna go into a lot of deep economics about the market. We're gonna have you feeling it like you know what to do, because I know what to do and I know how to handle these things. So bulls, stay bullish. There's asset classes to be bullish and that's what ever bullish means. It doesn't always mean stocks. It doesn't always mean options. Shout out LabU, sorry about that one. Um, I was wrong and I'm here to admit it and I'm also here to move on. So here we are. Remember, we sold out of the ever bullish portfolios. Your, your portfolio manager, your other assets, your mutual fund manager, your, even your hedgies right now are not doing that. I'm doing that. You have the the uh, ability to have agency of your own investments when you're a customer. And right now you're gonna be laughing when the market either rebounds and you didn't have to participate in the emotionality of it because you can tell me right now that there's no way that the stock market is gonna continue bouncing off of all-time highs all the way through next year, particularly in tech stocks, particularly even in the stocks that we've loved this year like software as a service stocks, uh, stay-at-home stocks, COVID stocks, no one is safe right now but I have a couple places for you. So here we are, enough self-promotion. We're going to go um, to everbullish.com as always, guys. What do we do there? We go to the investing article, guys. And then we also go to this week's game plan. So this week's game plan, I named this for a reason. I named this very concerning se sector uh, observation, long consumer staples, short tech, and don't forget the cash is king. Cash is an investment. Uh, so bulls, in case anyone out there was having uh, uh, doubts of concern, concerning what the market looks like right now, this is what a sell-off looks like, bulls. Um, if you were curious, this is what a panic looks like, bulls. This is a panic. There's no rationality. I'm gonna explain to you why. And also, that formulates my hypothesis on where you are going to invest, if you're going to invest this week and how to buy certain things and how to get the best price on those things because we have taken a licking. You've taken a licking, not as bad as most investors, but you are taking a licking right now if you're still invested. And again, that's why we sold out. So I got this picture of a dude freaking out. Hopefully y'all can see this in the background. Um, I'm gonna be vulgar because I've passed my three minutes. The market gives a fuck not about your basis. I'm speaking directly to about 15 of you guys out there. Um, I'm okay being second guess. I appreciate it. I like it. But bear with me here. When you tell me I don't want to sell this stock because I think it's going to go back up, but I'm not sure if it's going to go back down or back up in the future, in the near future, you've already lost. The market doesn't care what your basis is. The market doesn't move based on what you own a stock at. If you're down 50, it is not more likely to go back up than it is to go all the way down. Um, I know that this doesn't feel right. This doesn't make sense. Uh, emotionally and logically as humans, we can't appreciate that. But when you wanna sell something, um, and when you, when I say to sell something, either sell it or don't, but don't do it because of your current basis. The market cares not about your basis. Um, being afraid to sell will kill your accounts. We got this guy freaking out right here. Does that look like anybody? Looks like me except for the suit, right? The suit's gone. Star Wars shirts, baby. Um, by the way, this is when your advisors tell you to stay invested. I'm not telling you to stay invested. I don't get fired if I don't sell you the things that your boss has to sell you. 
He will get fired regardless of your returns if he doesn't sell you the things that he has to sell you. If that doesn't look like a moral hazard to you, if that doesn't help you understand that the future of investing is newsletter investing and it's never been cheaper, it's never been easier and it's never been, I should say it's never been freer because it's free. Um, and you've got bosses like me that put it all on the line to provide you the insights necessary. By the way, this is when your advisor tells you to stay invested and why ever bullish is simply better. I don't have a boss to get mad at me. I tell you the truth. Um, go buy the ever bullish portfolios that we sold out of the market amidst the last two days of a collapse. All right, so what's going on? What's causing all of this? Remember, rule number one at ever bullish. What is it, guys? I know you're going to say it to yourself. Go ahead and say it. Ding, ding, ding. You're right. It's follow the Fed. Um, look, Jay Powell, this is a repost even. So last week, Jay Powell came out and he added risk off sentiment by saying that we we're going to slow down the purchasing of bonds. Or that maybe it was a good idea to slow down the purchasing of bonds. And not only to slow them down, but think of it like you're at the bar and you got an hour to keep drinking. But then all of a sudden the bartender says, hey, we're actually going to close down 30 minutes early. We're going to stop serving 30 minutes early. What does everybody do? They either run to the bar for their last drink, a lot of the buying in November, early December, or they go and get the car started to get their designated driver to go start the car. They get, the, they get, that, get, get out of there. The party's over, right? They want to miss the crowd. That's a big good example of what's happened as far as uh institutional managers so we knew that right j pal came out and he had a clarifying comment this is a second thing the word transitory is no longer going to be used they moved removed the word transitory from the description of inflation that's not good guys the word transitory has become a meme uh and become a joke because no one really uses that word in general to mean something is is uh you know evergreen it's going to last for a long time and not only is it going to last for a long time but it will be tra it will be transition through um to other asset classes and now they're not saying that big deal permanent mark he this is his exact words we tend to use to use the word transitory to mean that it won't leave a permanent mark in the form of higher inflation so I'm going to forgive his double negative here. What he's saying is that, hey, I know that I told you that this wasn't going to be a big deal. And now we're going to stop using that word because it makes you think that it might not actually be a big deal. Or in this case, it might be a big deal. He's telling the world inflation is going to be a big deal. Not good. Um, news of the Omicron variant. So this is a repost. This is what I said. This is where the sheriff was wrong. Um News of the Omicron variant, lowering risk appetites, material drop in the efficacy of the Moderna. This confirms the bullish bet on biotech and LabU. Lost that trade. Worst lump I've taken in several years on that trade. I'm going to keep moving forward. Here's the deal. Biotech is not going anywhere. Biotech is at an all-time low. I like to buy a biotech, but I'm going to wait until next year. We're going to figure out this Omicron thing. And we're going to wait till correlations add back up. Um, still don't believe that there's a panic. Well, I said that last week and I was dead wrong. There is a panic. Um, so that was number one was the Fed. Number 1.5 here is the Omicron variant. Very, very bearish on the Omicron variant. Um, and mostly because, uh, tightening projections on oil consumption with the shutting down of the borders. Y'all know that. Jet fuel and fuel and consumables not looking good. Y'all know that. Um, the oil market took a d devastating turn and um, it was providing entry for the future ever bullish one, ever bullish all stock, ever bullish balance and ever bullish dividend portfolios as we go into next year, especially as we go in into cash. Uh, the second thing, so this is the way I want one, 1 1.5 and now two. So here's two tax loss harvesting. The wash shell rule in many ways uh, impacts a heavier tax loss burden on um on large investors, on big time, big money. And in my opinion, yeah, we all tax loss harvest. We look at our losses at the end of the year, we match them up with gains, right? Well, big money players that want to keep positions in your companies like Palantir, they want to keep, uh, you know, Zoom, they want to keep DocuSign, they want to keep Tesla is probably the biggest one that we've seen as a tax loss harvest before one month before the year is over so in that november late november early december time frame so they they can sell their tesla they can take their loss they can wait until the beginning of next year buy it back again and lo lower their basis based on the loss or take the tax loss in general if they were the ones that bought it let's say one uh you know uh 1200 or 30, the 1250 that it hit right you got it in tesla at the wrong time in say september or october you're selling it right now and you're gonna go buy it back again in a month 
that's impacting the market too. You're not hearing a lot of people talk about that, but we all do know about that. And then we had the job report. The job report was way off. Samsonite, right? Um, they were expecting 535,000 new jobs to be created. Uh, less than half of that, 2,000 more, less than half of that. So about 40% of that, 210,000 jobs were reported. No one wants to get a job right now. Does it affect the market? Probably not as much as it looks, but hey, when there's one thing going on, there's another thing going on. So we got inflation, we got we got the Omicron variant. We're just, we don't know what the real blame is, but the, the let's go ahead and add fuel to the fire. In this case, it was jobs. This also really made the president look really silly because um, his projection and his team have just, they've been completely off on all these numbers. These do come out of the White House. A lot of people, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, but <coughs> they have a lot to do with this because it impacts polling. And they've just been dead on, uh, dead off. And it has nothing to do with COVID. The reason people aren't going to work is not because they're worried about getting COVID. No one's worried about getting COVID anymore. People are uh, People are worried about getting COVID, but the market isn't worried about the COVID implications as much as it's genuinely, a lot of people do not want to go back to their shit job um, when work from home is so easy. And uh, I'm one of those people. All right, fourth, here's the four, here's the, so four and five, these are not in popular opinions. These aren't things that you already know, but crypto, in my opinion, you know, crypto revealed to us that the correlating negatively to the stock market, the safe haven, the gold-esque nature of crypto was going to track. Um, the theory of stocks go up, bonds go down. Well, that hasn't happened uh, because stocks were going up and bond yields were staying stable or falling. And they climbed a little bit and then they fell right off a freaking cliff. Um, but other than that, we also had, hey, there's a prettier asset. There's a prettier girl at the dance. Let's go dance with her. She's a new chick from Bowie High School. She's hot and she just moved here, right? No. Um, that's not happening anymore. Crypto just stopped correlating. And to me, that's a, a further irrationality of the markets. Uh, and then finally, interest rates dropped like a rock. Uh, like a rock? Like a rock. Interest rates were at 1.8% uh, on the 10-year-ish. They dropped to 1.5. The other day, I saw them at 1.4.5. Um, usually, this is a good thing for growth stocks. If yields aren't climbing... It pays you more money to put your assets in things that will do what much better than the average dividend paying stock or the average 10 year note, which is known as the reliable rate. Um, this is factored in with real interest rates, this is factored in with business valuation, it's factored in with anything. And typically the lower that number, the higher the statistical chances of a good market are gonna come. But look, that didn't happen. Tech stocks sold off, not good. Uh, and then finally, uh, I will repeat, the market does not care about your basis. I don't care that you think that the stock is going to come up because you also probably think it'll come back up and then go back down. Are you really going to sell it at the right time? This is going out to the bulls that have been, uh, you know, just completely complaining about having a loss in a portfolio and not wanting to sell out of a piece of those stocks. It's just a piece, guys. And remember, you can always buy it back tomorrow. So the best trading lesson that I can give you from a place of no ego is to not have an ego about your basis because the market gives a you know what not. It does not care about your basis. All right, guys. So based on all this information I've given you, I'm going to pause. This is where we break. I'm going to cut this off on YouTube. If you want to see the stocks that I recommend, go to my sub stack. You can watch the entirety of this video. You can pay for the sub stack. You can learn to be a better trader and you can make yourself all the money you expected to when you got into trading. I will repeat, the market cares not about your basis. All right, so the Substack again, the Sherpa.substack.com. 10 seconds, we're gonna keep going for you subscribers out there, the real OGs, the real market mavens, the real bulls. Okay, how my guys? So as I mentioned earlier in this video, I, I, I am not, in any way bullish on tech stocks, energy stocks. Unfortunately, I am bullish on consumer staples. If you look at the chart that we have up here, that is obviously gonna be down in this post. You know, normally what happens right now is that when the market stops correlating, all of these sectors, so we got real estate down big time, energy down big time, information technology down big time, consumer discretionary, healthcare materials, 
consumer staples. Normally, those are gonna be all be sold off, but the amount that they move is not much. It's not like we're seeing these tech stocks getting sold off, DocuSign, Zoom, not just COVID stocks. Um, Amazon, down big time. Google, down big time. Uh, these Tesla, down big time. We're seeing these broad market, NASDAQ oriented, tech heavy, Salesforce killed earnings and then dropped 9%, big deal, right? Well, what that's telling us is that this isn't just the market not wanting to buy right now. This is people saying certain sectors are going down and I need you to be out of them. Um, I genuinely absolutely hate seeing this, but the two sectors that perform, and not only do they perform, but they performed well here, is gonna be the consumer staples and utility sectors. Um, when it comes to consumer staples, what's fun about, you know, toothpaste and toilet paper, uh, you know, what do we love about uh, laundry detergent, right? I don't want to invest in that. There's nothing fun in that. I oftentimes say there's no money in that. That's the only place I think your money should be right now. If you want to buy industrials, you can buy industrials, but I still think that there's too much tumultuous things going on with the rollout of the, uh, the uh, they're calling it the Biden plan, but the infrastructure plan. Okay, so when it comes to this week, Cash is king, go short if you wanna go short. I think going short is a good idea, but I'm actually gonna wait this week. There's three positions that I like, and one of them is, a, is basically a, a, a formulation, a little extra speed, a little extra leverage on those positions. So, consumer staples was up. Jesus. Am I still recording? Ugh. All right. Consumer staples was up. Uh, utilities was up and then everything else was down. That means that the fund managers are not only going, hey, I've got all this new money coming in and I don't love the market. It, it's saying I'm going to buy defensive companies because I think the market's going to be bad for long. Um, follow the big institutional money. So of all the things that bother me about the market news I mentioned above is that um, consumer staples and industrials traded up five to one, meaning 80 percent uh, by 80 percent up up trading stocks and only 20% in the sector down. So five to one of the pick five, you know, four out of five stocks are gonna be up versus the one that's gonna be down in those sectors. Um, that means that's big money, that's institutional money and that's people buying the indexes in my opinion. So the consumer staples index. So what do I think you should buy? I think you should buy IYK. If you wanna make anything for the rest of the year, I think IYK, IYK is just the I shares. This is like the XLE, the XLF. This is like the, um, uh, basically the SPY, this is just the broad index of consumer staples. If you look inside of there, it's going to be your Procter and Gamble's. It's going to be your Coca-Cola's. Okay. These are defensive consumer staples. They're things that people buy no matter what. Um, and then, so we also have the two time version of that. Cause you know me, I'm the Sherpa. You gotta, you gotta, uh, live, laugh and leverage, right? So you got UGE. UGE is just the two times. So we got one time consumer staples, two time consumer staples. After that, I did put SQQ on here because I just think the NASDAQ is going to keep getting beat up. I think if you said right now, Chase, it is the 5th of December. Will the NASDAQ be at a higher point at the end of the year or a lower point at the end of the year? I'd, I'd guess lower. Money where your mouth is, SQQQ. Um, consider that one. That's a three-timer. You're going to get a lot of movement. That could be good for a dip trade. That could be good for a sector swing trade. That's a really good place to just put alerts in. Just put an alert that says if it's down... Uh, if it's up three days in a row, I'm going to buy, you know, blank amount of shares of the down because this isn't stopping. This is real volatility. This is a real panic sell. Um, and I'm glad we're out of it. And then finally, SARK. This is the short arc. Um, capital, total capital, short innovation. I love you, Kathy Wood. You are my dream woman. You're the most innovative investor that puts it all on the table and goes balls to the wall no matter what. But right now, all the sharks are hunting you. Uh, you're the injured uh porpoise i don't know if that makes any sense but you're you're bait right now and everybody's going after you i'd rather be on the side uh that is uh, loading their muskets and fighting than the side that's running for the hills and right now tech is running for the hills and that's what you invest in i'm going to be back in arc but this is s-a-r-k this is short arc if you look at the, it's only been around for a month and a little less than a month and ever and since it's been around it's up it's up very nicely for a non-leveraged uh security so that's where we're at bulls <clears throat> Please remember, you can always go to the sub, well, this is for the sub stacker, so do it. Uh, you've got the download. You've got the download of the podcast if you ever want. And then most importantly, uh, you know, I got a couple of these going out to you bulls. 
um, everybody that supported me this year. Christmas cards. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy Hanukkah. Have a hop, Happy Happy Holiday and a very, very bullish New Year. Everbullish.com. Chase at Everbullish on YouTube. The Sherpa at Substack.com. The Everbullish One Podcast. I've got some really cool things happening on the website very soon. Love you all. Live, laugh, leverage. AFG, LFG, LGR. Let's get rich.